Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about cutting speeds. In the previous video, I talked about belt speeds, and the concept of cutting speeds is the same mathematically. Anytime you have a circular speed, you're going to use this formula. When we're finding cutting speeds, it doesn't matter if it's the cutting speed of the tool that we're using or the cutting speed of the piece that's being machined. The formula is going to be the same. And in either case, we're working with a circular shape and we need to know circumference of a circle, which is pi times the diameter. And pi is a number, a special number, 3.1416 or 3.14, or you can use the pi function on your calculator. So that gives us the distance around a circle. And if we know how many revolutions per minute that tool or that piece is turning, then we can find the distance in a minute. And if our diameter is in inches, we can change it to feet by dividing by 12. So it's exactly the same formula as for calculating belt speed. Cutting speed will be equal to the circumference, which is pi times d, times r, which is revolutions per minute, divided by 12. That gives the cutting speed in feet per minute, which could be also called surface feet per minute. And this formula works if our diameter is in inches. So d represents the diameter. And R represents revolutions per minute. When you're working with cutting speeds, you will be able to look up what the desired cutting speed or the recommended cutting speed is for the particular type of metal that you're cutting. With that information and knowing the diameter of the piece that you're working with, you can find what RPM is best suited for that material. However, when you're solving for R, it's a little more complicated than if you're finding cutting speed. And in the real world, you're gonna know the cutting speed and you're gonna be trying to determine R. So if we were to rearrange this formula and isolate R, so our cutting speed is equal to pi times D times R divided by 12. The way that we can isolate R is to divide by anything that's being multiplied to R and multiply by anything divided into R. So in other words, we're gonna multiply both sides by 12, and we're gonna divide both sides by pi times diameter. All of these numbers over here will cancel so that you'll get R by itself. So R will equal 12 times the cutting speed over pi times the diameter. You could use this formula to find RPM, but in machining, what's typically done is this number is simplified. Pi is rounded off to a three. 12 divided by three is a four. So the formula you will probably see is four times the cutting speed divided by the diameter. So you have two options if you're asked to find the RPM when you know the cutting speed. You can either use the formula and isolate for R, or you can use this shortcut. Because I come from a math perspective, I like understanding what the formula represents, and I know how to manipulate my formula so that I can isolate my R. However, if you're doing this calculation a lot, you might find this much easier. You will get a little bit different of an answer if you use this method, but it's not an exact science, so you're just getting a guideline for your RPM, so it's not gonna be vital that it's exact. Let's take a look at an example where we're finding the cutting speed using both methods, and then you can compare. This question says the desired cutting speed of carbon steel is between 80 and 120 feet per minute. So that would be the 
lowest value you would want to have, and that would be the highest value you want to have. Find the maximum and minimum speeds in RPM of a piece that is two inches in diameter. So I'm going to start finding the minimum. I'm going to plug 80 into my formula for cutting speed. The diameter is two, and I'm finding R. So I can either take pi times two and divide by 12 and get one number here times R, and then isolate R by dividing by that. Or the other option is I could take 80, multiply by 12, divide by pi, and divide by two. I actually multiply both sides by 12, but the 12 on the right side canceled. I divided both sides by pi, but the pi on the right side canceled and I divided both sides by two, it canceled here. So I got R by itself by doing the inverse operation of what was going on here. When I calculate this, I get an RPM of 153. And because we're not gonna be exact with our RPM, I'm gonna go ahead and round off to the nearest whole number. Let's use this formula again to find our maximum. RPM. So this time I'm going to put 120 in for cutting speed. And I do the same process. I multiply both sides by 12. I divide both sides by pi and I divide both sides by 2. When I do that, I get R isolated. And when I do this calculation, I get a value of 229. So I can use this method or I can use the shortcut formula that I showed you. So these are the values I got using the exact formula. Let's find the values by using our shortcut formula. So the first number I'm going to plug in is 80. So my minimum can be found by taking 4 times 80 dividing by the diameter of 2. So that's 320 divided by 2 will be 160. And my maximum RPM will be 4 times 120, my cutting speed of 120, divided by 2. That's 480 divided by 2, so the answer is 240 RPM. So my range would therefore be 160 RPM to 240 RPM close enough to these values that this would be acceptable. You choose the method that you prefer. I find students will typically use this, especially if they're machining students, because this is what they see in the trade all the time. But if you want to understand the formula, you can do it using the actual true formula. Let's take a look at finding cutting speed if you're working with metric units. If you're working with cutting speed in metric units, your cutting speeds usually will be listed in meters per minute. And we're still going to use the process of finding that cutting speed. We're going to take the distance around a circle, which is circumference, which is pi times diameter. And then to find that distance in a minute, we multiply by the number of revolutions per minute. Usually your diameter will be measured in millimeters. So in order to change millimeters to meters, we need to divide by 1,000. Let's do an example where we're finding RPM in metric units. Very similar question to the previous one. We have the recommended cutting speed, this time for aluminum, is 85 to 110 meters per minute. So we have a range, which means we have a range for our RPM. We want to know the minimum and the maximum RPM for a piece that's 50 millimeters in diameter. In order to find the minimum, I plug my cutting speed, my minimum cutting speed in of 85. The diameter is 50 millimeters, and just make sure that it's in the unit that is in our formula, times R over 1,000. Now there's two options for solving for R. I could take pi, multiply by 50, divide by 1,000, get one number here, and then divide both sides by that number to isolate R. Or 
I can move each of these numbers over by performing the inverse operation. In this case, we're dividing by 1,000, so to get rid of it, I'm going to multiply it by 1,000. Whatever I do to this side, I have to do to this side. And that eliminates the 1,000 from, from the right side. Pi times 50 is multiplied to r, so I'm going to divide both sides by pi times 50. And on this side, everything cancels except the r. When I do the calculation, when I take 85 times 1,000, divide by pi, and divide by 50, I get 541 RPM. I'm going to do the same process with 110 meters per minute as my cutting speed. I take 110, multiply both sides by 1,000, divide both sides by pi, and divide both sides by 50. When I do it on the right side, everything cancels except the r. Then when I multiply 110 by 1,000, divide by pi, divide by 50, r is equal to 700. This is my minimum RPM, my maximum RPM, to make sure my cutting speed stays within this range. The biggest thing to watch with cutting speed is your units, making sure your diameter, if it's metric, is in millimeters, so that this formula works and gives you meters per minute. If it's another unit, then you're not going to use 1,000 to change it to meters, so just be careful of that. And if your diameter is in inches, you can either use the actual formula for finding the RPM, or you can use the shortcut. It's totally up to you. Yeah.